Hello, Serie A fan. On Tuesday night, the world held its breath, waiting to find out how the Italian team's gone in Europe. Gasparini urges Liverpool to stop the count. The Federation threatens Lazio with legal action, and the Group B crime family is trying to steal qualification from Conte. We want our freedom from the world in this episode of Scudetto. Hello and welcome to Scudetto. It is Thursday, the 5th of November. We still don't know who the next president of the United States is, but we do have the big news of the week now. Uh, I'm, of course, talking about the results of Italian football teams playing in European competitions, except for Milan. Uh, But I imagine we'll know that by part two as well, and it's not looking good. Anyway, we'll get into all that shortly. But first, tearing themselves away from CNN to join me in the virtual studio, Kenny and Boaz. I'm watching Fox News, actually. (laughs) <laughs> controversial some good insight into our political views there no i'm kidding uh kenny how are you i'm good i'm good oscar how are you i'm all right i've done badly on the civilized beer front here it's uh past 9 p.m so it's illegal to buy beer in finland but i've got a nice nice glass of riesling that doesn't sound very civilized yeah i mean it's quite nice and dry i'm enjoying <sighs> it i'm not sure i approve no oh, sorry uh, i'll endeavor to do better for next week how have you got on, Kenny, on the beers front? I've uh, a kind of feeling like I've pulled out of the bag here now because I have gone so local. I've got myself a beer that is brewed literally around the corner from my house. It's by Camper Van Brewery, and it's called Leith Juice. It's an orange session IPA, which promises to be quite nice. I quite like the sort of citrusy ones. That's, uh, I'll have a go at it now and see what it's like. Sounds lovely. We'll revisit that later. Uh, Baz, what have you got? I actually um, went out and acquired a 7% India Pale Ale, because, uh, especially for the pod. But since, uh, as you alluded to earlier, the Milan game isn't going too well, I've um, opted for something a little bit softer, which is going to be the 6% uh, Smash IPA, which I had a few weeks back as well. It's an interesting approach. When my team doesn't do well, I usually opt for something stronger. But, I wanted uh, to celebrate. Respect your restraint there. Good. Yeah, we'll look forward to hearing how it goes down. Um, just a quick scheduling update before we get into the football. We're going to be back next Tuesday. And for the foreseeable future, uh, do expect to hear from us at the beginning of the week rather than the end. So with that out of the way, we're going to start off with Juve. Um, they've won two games, 4-1, since we last spoke about them. Uh, admittedly, two games they probably should have won. Uh, that's obviously Spezia and uh, Ferenc Varas. Um, but they do seem to be looking a little bit better. So it's just starting off with Ronaldo, who had the opportunity in the second game, in the Ferenc Varas game, to, to equal Puskas's goal-scoring record. Kenny, how did he get on with that? It, it was also on the on the same on the site of uh, Puskas's home ground. Is that is that correct? Or at least yeah, it's in the so, in the right country. <laughs> no, I, it's it's in the actual same place, but it, the stadium has been rebuilt since then. Obviously, uh, that obviously was the the nice thing about it. He had the opportunity to. You know, to do something really poetic, uh, and it, it would have been wonderful. And he had plenty of chances to do so, but he left his shooting bits at home and didn't manage it. He had loads of golden, uh, golden opportunities, but but no, to answer your question, sadly, he didn't. But Alvaro Morata did get on the score sheet, and uh, he's looking bad. He's managing to stay on side a little bit more. Um, <laughs> what, what did you make of him? Yeah, yeah, great. That's his uh, sixth goal in seven games since he's come back to Juve. So I think he he's at everything that they that they needed really. He's looking very good, and now that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's back from COVID, and now that we appear to have someone resembling the the Dybala from last season, not on account of his two goals because those were absolute shockers by the keeper, but you have to say that yeah. Um, Juve, things may be turning a bit rosier for for Juve and for Pirlo. Yeah, we'll have to feed back to our Madrid correspondent and what we've made of, of Morata so far. And if you count uh, Morata's offside goals, he's got about 20 goals this season already. So it's a very good going. <laughs> yeah, off to a flyer. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, as we said, uh, probably two games they should have won. But even so, look, looking better for Pirlo and... 
this weekend, they go to the capital to face Lazio uh, on Sunday. Uh, and Lazio come into the game off the back of this 1-1 draw away at Zenit St. Petersburg. Uh, it was a bit of a scrappy game, Buzz, wasn't it? But they did they, see, they got a lot of credit, especially from, from pundits on Twitter for a very gritty performance. Uh, what did you make of it? So it's a second away win in the Champions League for Lazio. And considering that um, this time they had eight senior players missing, it's a good result for sure. As you said, very, very scrappy and uh, a lot of kind of last ditch defending, maybe not the greatest defending that we could see from Lazio, but uh, they got the job done. And you have to give credit to Casiedo because uh, yet again, he's saved Lazio's ass and he's um, a player that Inzaghi can rely on. And he, he had some great words to say about him and actually the whole team after the game. Speaking of COVID crisis, they're they've also having they're also having their own little drama, uh, which Kenny knows a little bit more about quite than I do. Big drama, yeah, quite yeah. A big drama, <laughs> yeah. I think. So yeah, Kenny, tell us all about it. Well, I, I, we we spoke about it uh, last week, and I think uh, all of Europe all of Europe really knows um, that they had half their squad out uh, for for the game last week uh, with with COVID. That situation didn't change this midweek for the game that um, Boaz just spoke about, but it did change at the weekend uh, for the game against Torino, where their their players were available. It was a against. crazy game. Yeah, yeah. It has to be said for anyone who didn't catch it, uh, Lazio were trailing uh, for free until the the f- uh, free two, free two. Sorry, in the ninety fifth minute, and ended up winning by four free. So four free, yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. And um, that's uh, Serie A for you. And they were saved by uh, Shiro Mobile, who of course was uh, one of yeah. the players you. Had- alluding to Kenny was uh, out with COVID back for the weekend and then out with COVID again so what happened there <laughs> yeah I mean exactly there's uh, so the uh, Fiji here doing uh, uh, an investigation or lost launched uh, an investigation into this which I mean something's going on and it definitely doesn't it doesn't reassure you about the quality of these COVID tests because according to UFS tests he was um Positive last week, according to Lazio's, he was negative last week, then negative again before the weekend, as were many other players. Uh, and then after the weekend, uh, UF, UF tests again have found Immobile positive, along with uh, some other Lazio players. But uh, the the Lazio tests now as well are finding Immobile positive, although albeit with a very low uh, level but still it's just absolute chaos and it's really to be honest it really is not uh very reassuring if we're placing our bets as a society on being able to sort of test and trace and all that sort of stuff uh, doesn't reassure you really about the quality of the, the tests does it i was just going to say presumably the uefa tests are much more sensitive which raises the question of how many other latent cases there might be in mm-hmm. syria and Lazio have uh, priors in skirting around the, the COVID rules. Earlier in preseason, there was a period, I think it may, might have been last season, there was a period when uh, supposedly, yeah, it was during the break last season, there was a period where supposedly uh, clubs could not train in, in groups. Their players were supposed to train alone, but Lazio, their players were were caught training together, much like a few other clubs, but still... You know, if Luti- when Lotito is involved, there's always going to be some sort of scam. <laughs> no comment on that. Um, I will just, just round up our Lazio discussion with dishonorable mention for that disgusting kit. I mean, lime green with sky blue trimmings. Not for yeah, me. We've seen it a few times, haven't we, this season? But yeah, it's it's, it's a bit bit much for me to it actually looks quite nice in the promotional photos when when you guys were talking about it i I didn't really know what you were getting at but then you see the you see it live in a game and it looks like they're wearing one of those uh luminous vests that you wear for when you your car breaks down yeah maybe it's the clash with the pitch that really sets it off (laughs) um anyway uh, let's have a few more honorable and dishonorable mentions and then we'll wrap up part one uh buzz you want to kick us off with uh milanese yeah, this is usually your um, your team, Roma, but uh, young Tommaso Milanese made his debut for Roma today in the U- Europa League. And uh, 
his quotes are amazing. He's 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 kind of incredulous that he's got a game, and it's it's very endearing to see. Thanks for that. And you've got also one for uh, Diego, who's obviously coming back to Napoli next. Who's, <laughs> sorry, who's uh, sending Messi to Napoli next season? I think uh, any real fan of Serie A or anyone who loves football will want to wish Diego a very quick recovery. Uh, obviously, we all know by now that he was in hospital earlier in the week. Wishing him all the best. Uh, Kenny, you've got one for us. A man who can't stay out of our mentions. Yeah. Um, so I felt like this was a bit, this was cheating a little bit uh, because uh, basically two of my honorable mentions are goals. So I feel like that's cheating. So I've made him one honorable mention. Uh, the first one's for Zlatan's uh, reinterpretation, the yoga interpretation of the overhead kick. The ability to do that at, um, at his age is uh, incredible. Just to think to do it really in that in that moment, um, completely unconventional, but completely intentional. Uh, wonderful, wonderful winner uh, against Udinese. And the second was for Gervinho's cushioned rocket. I've called it uh, because of you know we were we we're speaking about it in the before we recorded the pod, uh, Oscar. Um, that the first goal uh, for Parma against Inter, just the control with his left foot to first time hit that ball with the inside of his foot in, uh, with that pace into the top corner. It was just a uh, lovely, wonderful goal. And I'll let you, I'll help you split those into two separate honorable mentions by first saying that uh, Zlatan is the first player to score in six consecutive Serie A games since Zlatan. And also that uh, Gervinho, who scored two goals against Inter, was uh, one of the players Antonio Conte, who we'll get on to later, was seriously interested in and wanted he really wanted him as the the vice Lukaku so to speak so it's uh some irony that he would be the one to score two goals against Inter lovely stuff thanks for that uh, that's what we've got time for in part one we'll be right back hello Serie A fan make Scudetto a part of your weekly football fix subscribe now on Apple Podcasts Spotify or your favourite listening platform and follow us on Twitter Facebook and Instagram at Scudetto Pod. We'd love to have you on the squad. Hello and welcome back. Still no news on the presidency, but I can tell you Milan lost 3-0 to Lille at home. Boaz, their first loss since March. Any quick reaction from you? First of all, I'm kind of devastated, but uh, not really because it's. Uh, I think it was long coming and uh, it's a good thing to get it out of the way now when it's a middle of the group game. Onwards and upwards. Uh, after 24 games, that amazing streak ends. But I'm going to switch it now and pretend that my, ever since my son was born, Milan have never lost in the league. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Long may it last. Okay, so we're going to talk about Atalanta and Inter in this part. But first, let's check in on the beers. Uh, Kenny, how's the, uh, how's the citrus IPA going down? This, this is going to be a weird thing to say about a, a fruity beer, but it's it tastes quite adult. It's not really like orangey. It's more like orange peel. It's more zesty. Um, I quite like it, but I've got to come up with something different to say than I quite like it about beers on this podcast. (laughs) It's more um, bitter than sweet, maybe? Yeah, it is more bitter than than sweet. It says in the can that it's um, hoppy and zesty. I am getting the hops, but definitely more, more zest than hops. It's really nice, but I'll think of a different adjective for our next podcast. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, how about you, Baz? You happy with your selection for the week of beer? I, this is much better than I remembered it last time I had it. So um, I'm gonna, I am gonna. think I'm going to buy this again. It's a very nice, crisp IPA. Quite nice, as Kenny would say. It's quite nice. It's quite nice. Well, I'm glad we're drinking all of us nice beers. Well, except for me. I'm drinking some nice wine. Not that nice, actually. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> Inter, let's talk about Inter, because in, they seem to have forgotten how to win. Came back from 2-0 down to be drawing 2-2 with in-crisis Real Madrid, but they chucked it away at the end. Lost 3-2. Uh, Kenny had Inter down as potential champions at the start of the season, Baz. Yeah, what yeah. happened? <laughs> First of all, I, I mean, I probably had them down as potential champions as well, although I wouldn't, I didn't want to say it for obvious reasons. Because you hate Conte. No, but I, I actually love Conte. I think he's a great, <laughs> great character. He adds a lot to the game. 
but uh, I'm not sure I love the new version of Conte. This season, he's uh, gone out of his way to be happy. Conte, he keeps mentioning how he's happy, the club's happy, the players are happy, how he, how much he's enjoying this new way of playing. But ultimately, I, I kind of miss the old grumpy Conte who just knew how to grind out the result. Focusing on this game specifically, after being 2-0 down and uh, managing to claw it back to 2-2, it felt like the momentum was in Inter's... Uh, Inter, Inter had the momentum and uh, also considering Real Madrid's uh, recent form it really it looked like Inter should have gone on to win it and yet here we are talking yet again about another defeat and uh, this leaves them in a very precarious position in the Champions League group considering that Munchenblach managed to um, <laughs> <laughs> they managed to uh, they won 6-0 against Shakhtar so um, that puts the group in a very interesting situation uh, I still think Inter should qualify, but uh, Conte really needs to start getting his act together. He spoke again about um, them being unlucky and saying that he doesn't know how many teams have come to Real Madrid and taken points this this year. But the thing is, I mean, there's only so many times that you can be unlucky, right? He, I have said before on individual occasions they are uh, unlucky, but at a certain point it doesn't become luck. You've got to kind of you've got to kind of accept and address the fact that there are bigger underlying problems there. Leaving aside the fact that this comes off the back of a 2-2 home draw against Parma, which, which where Gervinho's lovely goal came from in the last game. And even there, they needed a 90th minute goal from Perisic. But in this game specifically, um, there's so many talking points. There's also a few positive things, so maybe we should mention those first. For example, um, finally Lautaro scored. It been, I think it was four or five games since he last scored. And uh, with Lukaku out, they definitely need him to start firing. And also, um, impromptu honorable mention to Barella's back heel pass. The kind of, that's the stuff of magic is made of. Having said that, first of all, they conceded the headed goal from Sergio Ramos. This is a Serie A podcast. We focus on calcio, but even my six-month-old son knows that Sergio Ramos is going to try and score a header on, off a corner. And yet, there, here we are talking about it. Um, in addition, that quote you mentioned earlier from uh, Conte, not many people come to Real Madrid and get a result. That's not strictly true. Shakhtar Donetsk got a result. It's yeah. actually in the group stages. I mean, yeah. Real Madrid, even when they've been winning the competition, chuck points away in the group stages. This is far from a vintage Real Madrid. This is uh, this is a team that is kind of in transition, and yet, for all their huffing and puffing, Inter come, have come away with a loss. And again, I, you have to wonder what Conte is thinking with uh, some of his tactics. Even w- w- towards the end, he threw on Niangolan and left our boy Christian Eriksen on the bench. I think that experiment's over. Eriksen will leave in January. But either way, it, it shows a spectacular lack of... Uh, trust in your players. Also, Pinamonti, who is their, supposedly their backup striker, and yet uh, Perisic started up front in this game. So there's a lot of question marks for me, and uh, obviously Lukaku is a big miss, but you, I, I'm very I'm concerned for Inter. Again, Conte is the highest paid manager and say, yeah, he makes 12 million euros a year. Yeah, It's unreal that he has, he suddenly changed his football mentality and he's trying this live on the go it's, this is not the right season for this kind of stuff yeah I, you said before um you're confident that inter still going to make it out of the groups i have to disagree I, my, my prediction is they drop into the europa conte sorts out and they end up knocking milan out of the europa league it's, it's my hot take wow uh, it looks very complicated for them to get out of that group now really I mean, two points from the first three games. Obviously, stranger things have happened at the Champions League, but it's, it's an uphill struggle. Anyway, before that, they've got challenges closer to home, Atalanta this weekend. So let's talk about how they got on in Europe first. Uh, a bruising defeat, we have to say, Kenny, losing 5-0 at home to Liverpool. Was it a case of Liverpool just being really outstanding or did Atalanta not really show up? Liverpool were really outstanding. Atalanta were off the pace, and even Gasparini himself uh, said this. Uh, what I'm what I'm about to say uh, after the game, which is that they just they weren't as aggressive as as Liverpool. They 
were slower than than Liverpool and that's not what Atalanta's known what Atalanta have been known for really so yes it was a case that Atalanta were off the pace yes it was the case that they came up against one of arguably the top 3 uh, teams in Europe at the moment but it's it, it was uh, very bruising. Bruising was the right word. Uh, it could have been worse. Uh, it does have to be said that Atalanta could have got a couple of goals themselves. Uh, on another night, Zapata might have had a hat trick. Um, really, really unfortunate with that glorious effort off the the inside of the, the post and crossbar. But yeah, I mean, equally, Liverpool kind of took their foot off the accelerator and could have actually made this embarrassing. It was pretty embarrassing, but it could have looked a lot more embarrassing. And Gasparini sounded very disheartened after the game. Um, his quotes were that the team's not running as fast, not doing the th- the simple things. So um, hopefully he can get it all back together again soon. Yeah, it's there do seem to be some worrying signs for Atalanta. Now, they weren't that convincing in their 2-1 win over Crotone last week and uh, previously had to rely on Zapata to pull back the 2-0 deficit against Ajax. Also shipped four goals at Napoli. Um, At what point does this become a bit of a crisis, Kenny, both in the league and in Europe? Yeah, so um, basically they've conceded 15 goals since, including that Napoli game, since that Napoli game. They've uh, conceded 15 goals and uh, scored 10 there are obviously Atlanta are a team that it's uh, we've spoken about it before. Everyone's spoken about how Atlanta leave opportunities for their opponents, but the thing is that they also create so many that they're yeah just a, a goal machine. I would say that they're conceding too many at the moment, really, to um, hope to replicate what they did last season. But uh, they are without they're without Darun, they're without Gozens. And it's it's quite obvious to me, I think, that a lot of these players that have come in, uh, Gasparini had to. He It was the right thing to do. He had to expand the squad because he started this season knowing that there, were gonna, there was going to be extended periods of two games uh, two games a week. But the, the, the issue is that he plays such a unique style of football that it looks like a lot of these players that have come in are really still struggling to to get to grips with it. And he normally brings people in slowly. So there are worrying signs. They need to improve. I have no doubt they will improve, but we might need to be a little bit patient and hope, hopefully that doesn't impact too heavily on um, on this season. They're, they've still got a very decent shot of getting, getting out of this group. Um, so it's... Yeah, yeah, worrying definitely, but uh, not necessarily a crisis. And uh, in Atalanta's defense, uh, Liverpool are one of the richest clubs in the world. Uh, Jota, who scored a hat trick, and Thiago Silva, who uh, Thiago, sorry, who was uh, pulling the strings in midfield, are players who cost a lot of money this summer. Whereas Atalanta have the twelfth highest wage bill in Serie A, so there is quite a disparity, and uh, I think. Maybe we're being maybe because of last year, we're our expectations are a little bit high for Atalanta. Yeah, it's absolutely fair to add that caveat. Although, having said that, would we be that shocked if they could uh, pull off something of a turnaround when they come back to Anfield? Well, they lost uh, they lost five nil against Man City last season. Let's not forget about that. Um, the first time they faced them, uh, they had zero points from their first three games last season. So, no, we wouldn't bet against them doing it but they do need to turn things around quickly. And much like Real Madrid, they lost at home to Shakhtar Donetsk. And we know Real Madrid always go deep in the competition. So maybe that also uh, bodes well for this season. Good to end the discussion on a note of hope. Um, Just before we wrap up, let's have a few honourable and dishonourable mentions. Baz, you (laughs) want to kick us off with a a dishonourable for Puma's social media? Particularly given the result as we record tonight, Puma put out a, a very silly tweet this week that they basically referenced some co- shirt competition they were running on their Twitter channel. And uh, they said that since Milan won this best shirt competition, they haven't lost a game. I mean, I'm <laughs> making this correlation between my son and, the, and Milan, but this is even more ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how they react to this evening. Anyway, Kenny, you've got a, a dishonorable for 
a pretty uh, pretty dangerous tackle in the Fiorentina Rome again. Yeah, yeah, just for for that quarta. I mean, he got he got rightly got sent off for it. Quarta, the tackle on Jaco, but it really was a horrible, horrible tackle. And again, you can, we can't be going accusing people of anything, but I don't know what his intention was uh, going into that tackle in that way. And Jekyll was very, very lucky not to be uh, seriously injured in that. A horrible, horrible tackle and a very thoroughly deserved red card and a thoroughly deserved dishonorable mention, which probably matters less to him if we're, if we're honest with ourselves. <laughs> uh, one more dishonorable from you, Baz. Uh, first of all, uh, honorable mention to Torino for finally winning a game. It's been a while and they, it looked like they were almost going to win on a few occasions. So it's nice to get some points on the board. I was going to let you end on that positive note. but uh... I think that leads me nicely on to a dishonorable mention for uh, 